Okay, so we're going to talk about American Fall Brew, what it is, how to uh, treat it. So back in the hotel room, it's uh, 2, 2.05 a.m. I uh, just got back out of the field, had some uh, American Fall Brew in one of the hives, had to dispose of it. So we'll get to that a little bit later in this video. So um, what is American Fall Brew? It's a spore and it can live in the wood and bees can be not even in that woodenware anymore. So you have empty hive, uh, grandpa stored it up in the barn for the last 50 years and then you know you found it, you pull it out, you put bees into it and the bees die because they got American fowl fruit. Well that spore can live 50 years, 80 years, it's living in that wood. So um, how does it get transmitted? Well, one, using used equipment that you don't know how the bees died in there. There's all kinds of ways to get used equipment. People give it to you, you buy it off of Craigslist or Facebook or wherever. Uh, of certain states, they have big auctions that have uh, used woodenware. In Tennessee, it's illegal to buy woodenware. Uh, and it's just not a good idea. You don't know how those bees died into it other than the word of that beekeeper. Now, most beekeepers are pretty upright and they're going to do the right thing. But if that grandpa, he died and now the grandkids come in here and they just see dollar money, you know, and they see dollar value in those hives and they want to sell it, they're going to tell you pretty much anything just so they can sell you that hive. Do not put your bees in a hive unless you know how those bees died. So how does it get transmitted in other ways? Uh, it goes from bee to bee. The drones are very social. They're flying around. They look into other hives. Uh, so if they get in there and they're hungry, some workers are going to feed them. So they go from their stomach to the drone stomach, which if the bee has that spore in their stomach, then they just transmit it to that drone. That drone brings it back to your hive. So, uh, or it takes it to, you know, if you have it, it goes to another bee yard. Uh, another reason they can uh, get transmitted is because that American fowl brew is going to take over that hive. It's going to start diminishing the population. Population declines, and now it's a weak hive. They got a bunch of honey and nectar just above them, and they're just trying to be down there in the brew chamber, trying to keep what is alive alive, and it's not working. So here comes another hive that is much stronger, and they're opportunist. You know, they're going to take honey over trying to fly out, you know, a mile or two miles and get nectar when honey's right next door or right across the street at your neighbor's apiary or you're, you're across the street from them. So they're going to come in, they're going to rob the honey out, they're going to take the pollen. The spores are in the honey, it's in the pollen. So it, they're bringing it back to your hive or they're taking out of your hive to another hive. Um, Another way is hive tools. So it can be on your hive tool itself. Uh, you pump the bellows on your smoker, and now there's propolis, it has the spores in it, there's honey, there's wax, whatever, on your bellows. And now you take it to another field, and it, you're using your same leather gloves, and you're transmitting it from this frame to the next frame to the next frame on those leather gloves. There's plenty of ways to do it. So please, if you have more than one yard, if you have an out yard somewhere, please keep a hive tool in each yard. It's best if you keep a, a smoker in each yard also, and a pair of gloves in each yard. I like to use the disposable gloves, that way I'm not transmitting anywhere, and I can dispose of the gloves in between hives in case there's something in one hive I don't want to transmit to another. So. If you can, work with the disposable gloves. Uh, if you work with bare hands, then get some uh, antibacterial uh, wipes and wipe down your hands or use that uh, gel and wipe down your hands in between each hive. Some bees do not like that antibacterial soap or the uh, wipes, so be careful with that. Um, but if you got a hive tool, a smoker, a pair of gloves, you know, that's $40, $50 of equipment in each bee yard versus if you transmit from one bee yard to the next bee yard, now you have American Powell brood in one yard and now you have it in another yard. 
one hive alone is going to cost you over a hundred dollars easily plus the bees to put in it you know so it's worth it to have separate equipment for each yard uh, the biggest one is oh well before you get to that if you want to take a two outer covers flip one upside down put a deep body in on top of it then put your smoker your hive tool and your gloves inside that and then put another outer cover on top of that and now you have a sealed box that the bees can't get into and your uh, gloves and your smoker are not going to get weathered um, so all right so the next transmission one of the biggest i think is the beekeeper themselves and that's what i was just talking about you're going and not thinking about it you're moving a frame from this hive to the next frame or to the weaker colony either brood or honey or pollen you're trying to boost that weak hive so going from a strong hive to a weak hive isn't usually too bad unless it's the early stages of american fowl brood and you didn't notice it now you're just transmitting it to the weaker hive and you'll notice it in the weaker hive quicker because it's going to die much quicker than the strong hive um, if your hive dies and you don't know why well then don't start splitting up that hive if it's two deeps on there excuse me if there's two deeps on there and the bees died out of it do not split those deeps up onto other hives Wait till you get another swarm or in the beginning of the year and you have another nuke or um, package or whatever and put into that hive. Repopulate that dead out. If they die again, then maybe you'll catch why they died this time. And if it was American fowl brood, at least you didn't spread that, uh, those frames and those boxes up around other parts of the hive. Another good thing to do is number your frames, number your hives. I know it's tedious and it, you know, nobody likes the record keep when they're out there doing their bees. But if you ever get American fowl brood, at least you'll know where those frames went to. You'll know where that box went to. You know, if you switch it over to, the, you know, the fourth hive from the fifth hive and then later on you took it and you put it on the eighth hive, at least you know which hives it's been on and which ones to watch very closely for American fowl brood. Uh, what does American fall brood look like? Uh, it's kind of a, well, at the bottom of the cell, not the back of the cell. But when you're looking in the cell, the queen actually lays an egg at the back of the cell, not on the bottom, not when you're holding the frame up. The bottom is when you're, the frame is across, it's the bottom edge, that little rounded there. Uh, that, that pupa will become like a Kind of like chocolate or not chocolate um coffee when you got about half and half milk in there with coffee it's that kind of color it's really kind of brownish nasty looking uh it's going to be just laying down there on the side you can take a uh, matchstick stick it in there roll it around a little bit pull it out see if it ropes um if it ropes it's probably american fall brood they sell test kits it's worth to have a test kit or at least get one pretty quick and let your state apers know if you don't have a state apers uh, contact the beekeepers around you I know it's nobody wants to admit that they have American fall brood it is embarrassing because everybody thinks you know you think you're a bad beekeeper it gets transmitted okay don't think you're a bad beekeeper but contact the beekeepers around you at least an eight mile radius let them all know if you don't have a state apers here in Tennessee our state apers he draws out a map of eight miles around the infected hive and I've been lucky enough the last two years that they're in the eastern region where I'm at and I get to go around and check all the beehives make sure everybody's safe um, so uh, if it if it's past that decayed stage which usually the bees will open up the capping just a little bit just a little teeny opening and so you'll see a little opening in the capping or if not just take your hive tool and scratch the tip of the cappings um, if it's that nasty brown in there it could be that it's dried up to the point where you didn't catch it early enough and now there's scales in the bottom and those are kind of harder to recognize uh, trained eye you'll get used to it but hopefully you don't get a trained eye unless you're uh, an inspector because I hope you'll never get to see American fall brood so um, and so if you find American fowl brood, 
All right, so let's go over the steps of when you find American Fall Brew. Um, dig a hole during the day while the bees are still flying and stuff. Dig a hole right near there. You don't want to be transporting it too far. A couple feet is best. Uh, dig a hole about six, eight inches deep and large enough in case the hive is sitting in the middle of it and as it's burning it falls over. Yes, you're going to burn your hive. In case it falls over, it doesn't fall outside the hive. That hole is so when the honey starts dripping down, it gets caught in that hole and it doesn't run across the grass. And then the bees pick it up the next day. Uh, it will be boiling that honey, so it should kill the spores, but why take a chance? Uh, so still during the day, if there's two or more boxes on there, tape around the box. I usually do it twice with some duct tape and seal the, uh, the seam where the two boxes fit together. Also where the, uh, the lowest box and the bottom board meet, I tape three quarters away around the box there. Uh, I tape the inner cover also, or the outer cover down. You're trying to get it so it's airtight. Uh, you can tape off, or put an entrance reducer on there, tape off most of the entrance. You just want a nice small entrance. Get a can of ether. And when you see the last bees flying in at night, uh, get ready to close that hole with another piece of duct tape or something that's going to stay in there, but spray that entire can of ether in there. It's going to kill all the bees almost instantly. Um, now, if you have a screen bottom board, you need a screen or you need the bottom board in there and then tape that off because ether is heavier than air, so it's going to fall. And, uh, excuse me again. Um, so, spray that entire can in there and then close off that. Wait five, ten minutes, make sure all the bees are dead. So then you move it into that hole and get your paper ready. But as you're getting your paper ready, undo that uh, cover or maybe the bottom, open it up because that ether needs the air out of there. If it doesn't and you light this thing on fire, you're going to get a surprise of your life. Um, it may shoot that hive up a few feet in there, uh, or at least you're going to get a big wolf. You know, if that flame's coming out. So then get your paper ready, get it, you know, get it so it will catch that hive on fire. Burn everything. Uh, burn not just, you know, after you kill the bees, you're leaving the bees in there to burn up. You're burning the hive itself. The hive tool that you use, do not, once you find American Power Brew, drop that hive tool on that hive. One, as a marker. Two, don't use that hive tool again. Take your gloves off. Throw them on top of that hive, put the hive tool on it so they don't blow off. Um, your jacket you can take back home and wash it with bleach um, and the bale, you know, bale and everything else. Wash everything that kind of comes in contact with it. You don't want to spread these spores around. So once you're burning it in the, in the hole, let everything burn out completely. The next day you can go back out there and you can take your hive tool out. It's going to heat up to the point where it's killed the spores on the hive tool and overnight it'll cool and it'll uh, be strong again. Um, also, um, well actually, I think I've covered everything. If you got any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. Hopefully you liked the video. Hopefully I covered enough. Uh, if not, there's plenty of information on the internet. Uh, go to your local bee club, ask the bee club, hey, can we talk about American Fowl Bird at one of these meetings? And a lot of the bee clubs will definitely want to do that because they want that information out there. The better we can uh, educate the beekeeper and keep you away from transmitting uh, American Fowl Brood or the other, your neighbor or somebody within five to eight miles of you, you know, if we can get them to not transmit American Fowl Brood, we'll save a lot. Uh, our, in Tennessee here in our state, as soon as we know it's American Fowl Brood and it's confirmed, we kill those bees that night and we burn the equipment that night. So that's why I'm back here in the uh, hotel so late at night. So hopefully that was uh, educational to you. And if not, please let me know and I will add to it. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and I hope you never get American Fowl Brood.